In this video, I'm going to show you how I got four coats of Inner Lurks Perfection onto this boat. Uh, get a nice, flat, shiny finish, which is uh, pretty awesome, I think. Um, using roller only. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, keep watching. You'll see how I got this done. All right, so we're finally at a point. We're going to prime, uh, prime the boat with um, Total Boat Total Protect Barrier. Um, got a gallon. Um, when I did the gray, it uh, took about a quart for the whole boat, so I got a gallon. I'm figuring probably three quarts. Uh, that's the uh, barrier. That's the curing agent. Um, first thing I'm going to do is mix this up. So let me uh, let me give you a close up. Now this stuff is very thick, and um, what I did is I took both of these cans to the big box store and asked them to start uh, put them in their st shaking machines, and they did, which was pretty nice. So I think I got a head start on that, but I am going to make sure to really stir this stuff up really good. Now the way this is intended to be used is to um, pour that little can into the big can and mix it up and then you'll have a gallon of this stuff ready to go. But I don't want to... I don't want to use a whole gallon, so what I'm going to be doing is mixing up about um, a pint at a time. It is a three to one mixture. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll put uh, six ounces of this main product and two ounces of the uh, curing agent. I'll mix it up really well. Then you have to let it sit for an induction period. And that's 15 minutes. Now, in order to get these things measured really accurate, I've got these. These are uh, basically two ounces at a time. And um, this lets me really get a accurate. There. I'm going to stir this one really good. It is a two part epoxy system, three to one. You want to make sure the curing agent is really well uh, mixed in with the base. So we're going to let that sit for 15 minutes. That's the induction period. I'll set a timer on my phone. And um, while that's curing, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the, uh, wipe the entire boat down with, uh, with uh, denatured alcohol. All right, so the 15 minute induction period is over. Um, I've got this red tree roller, quarter inch net, solvent resistant. So I'm going to pour that out into the tray and I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start at the uh, transom, work my way forward, and you'll see this as I go along. So here we are at the transom. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, there's some areas that have to be brushed just because um, I'm not going to get the roller in there, obviously. This is going on nice and thick, though. You can see that already. So I stepped away and mixed up some more. Um, I ended up mixing up eight ounces on the first go around. Not sure what I was thinking of, but that wasn't enough. So I've got uh, basically a, a pint mixed up now, 16, and uh, going through its induction period. So I'm gonna keep painting. Once that's done, I'll uh, get it and I'll keep going. So after the last coat cured, I went ahead and mixed up another batch and uh, applied it uh, using a foam roller. 
This is a really just a common foam roller that you would get at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, and I, I find these uh, to be a lot easier to use. I did want to add this other coat, though. I want to make sure that we have a really solid barrier coat before we uh, put the Interlux Perfection on it. All right, so we're done with the uh, second coat of primer. Really, it's the third. The, the first one was that gray coat, which highlighted a lot of uh, defects, got those cleaned up. Then two coats of the uh, Total Bolt White, Total Protect. So it's three coats all together. Um, great thing is that none of the spider cracks are showing through at all. So I've got, I think, a pretty good barrier coat on here. Um, next is going to be a light sanding, uh, just to rough it up. Probably 120. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to research that and um, take down any uh, any bumps or bugs that got into it. And then I'm going to put the uh, put the final coats of paint on it. All right. So we got three coats of the. Uh, Total Barrier, or excuse me, Total Protect from Total Boat on here. Stuff's really great. It's done a great job of covering it up, but it leaves a little bit of a pebbly surface. And I really believe that um, to get the Interlux Perfection to give you a nice gloss, you have to have a smooth surface to start with. Uh, so I've been sanding it down. I've been using this 220 by hand, and uh, that's turned out to be a chore, if not a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to use this random orbital sander. And I'm putting 320 on it, gonna go over lightly till it's smooth. And um, we'll take it from there. Once we get that done, we'll start with the Interlux Perfection. So I wanted to stop for a moment, just go over a few things. Um, I, do, I am keeping some of this 220. Uh, and the reason for it, if you uh, go over this with that sander and try to go around it, it's, uh, it's probably going to take all the, all the primer off. Um, so I usually just will take a piece of sandpaper, bend it over that ridge, and um, just uh, smooth it out. Same with any other little ridges that you have. Um, you might have seen me going feeling over this as I sand it, and um, I get a better feel rather than a visual. Uh, for where I'm sanding. This thing's coming out really, really smooth. So I think we got a really great base coat for the um, Interlux Perfection. I did want to show you one thing, which I thought to be pretty interesting. Um, Total Ball says this, uh, this primer is flexible. It's very hard, but it is flexible. I mean, you this is uh, some leftover stuff that came out, and you can see it. Uh, it's almost like a rubber, but uh, it sands like like a real solid, uh, a real solid piece of uh, something. And um, here's some leftover. Of course, I mixed up a little bit too much at the bottom of the cup. Um, like any epoxy, it didn't stick to the plastic, but um, you can squeeze it. Probably can't see this, but you can squeeze it and um, you can see the flexibility of this stuff, which is pretty interesting because the great thing about it is then it's going to flex with the boat. With the, with the, it's going to flex with the, uh, with the boat, with the, with the uh, fiberglass if there's any flex when you're uh, pounding through waves so it is great stuff man I'm really impressed with this it, it seems to meet everything that they claim so let me get back to Sandy Well, that was a solid hour and a half of sanding, but uh, this thing is really, really smooth now. I think um, when we get the Interlux Perfection on this, it's going to look really good. At least that's what I'm hoping. Anyway, stay tuned. You'll see the uh, painting coming up next. So the weather's giving me a break, and I'm going to be able to roll on this uh, Perfection, the uh, Interlux Perfection. I'm going to be using a technique that's not really um, suggested by the manufacturer, but uh, Russell Brown has got a good book on it. and. Um, it involves really uh, thinning it out using a fine roller brush. We're not rolling and tipping, we're just rolling and actually using the roller to go back into the wet edge and smooth things out. Um, it is thin to a higher percentage. Uh, Interlux recommends that the, you don't thin the perfection uh, more than 10% when you're uh, rolling or brushing. Um, Russell Brown thins it out to 15%. I'm going to give that a shot. I'm always willing to try new things and I thought it would be interesting to see if we can get a really nice finish. Uh, with just a roller. Now these were nine inch rollers and um, what I did is I cut them half, they're four and a half inches. Uh, they're on a four inch roller frame. Um, so we'll see how this works. Let me go ahead and get this mixed up. 
Uh, one thing I will say, it is a two-part polyurethane. I will be wearing breathing protection for most of this. So I won't be talking a lot. Um, I'll probably just voice over the video as we go along uh, when I'm doing post-processing. So let me go ahead and get started. So I am very lucky today because the um, temperature's working out. There are some really specific um, environmental conditions that uh, are called for. Um, should be cooler than 80 degrees. Relative humidity should be less than 80 percent. And the difference between the temperature and your dew point should be at least 6 degrees. Uh, we fit all those conditions today. It's like a short window, small window of opportunity that I'm getting. Now this this stick, I actually cut the end flat so I could get into the bottom, make sure I, make sure I get as much as possible. And if you've seen me do this before, you know I use these syringes to measure. It's two to one. So I'll be using four ounces total of the paint and uh, two ounces of the catalyst or hardener, uh, whatever we want to call that at this point. Intellux has this funky little spout on these cans. Um, I thought about trying to open it uh, along the rim, but decided against it. They use it for a reason. So you have to pour it out. Um, and I'm using a container, the uh, getting a syringe and measuring out from the container with the syringe. Uh, so we put the excess back into the uh, can, give it a stir, and we'll let it sit for the 20 minute induction period. Uh, once that period is done, we'll get the thinner in there, uh, give it another good stir, and then we can start painting. So this is the point where I wanted to slow the video down a little bit and show you the Russell uh, Brown technique. And basically it's rolling out um, a roller full uh, about two lengths away from where the wet edge is. And then basically rolling it out, getting it nice and uh, even, or at least as uh, even as you can when you're spreading it out. I loaded up the uh, roller with a little bit more and I'm trying to get this as even as possible and once you get the paint spread out um, as evenly as you can what you want to do is roll over it lightly so that you don't leave any lines behind and that's what you see me doing here I'm basically going over it very lightly um, pretty much just the weight of the roller going over those uh, overlapping lines to flatten them out Well, that's the first coat, and um, looking good so far. Some places got to gloss, some don't. Uh, I'm going to end up sanding with 320 before I go with a second coat, so we'll give this a day or two to cure and uh, hit it with sandpaper. Uh, I cut it really close. The first batch I made six ounces. I mixed up six ounces, um, four and two, and did the uh, transom and half the boat. And then the second one, I said, let me try to save a little bit of paint. So I did... Um, I did, uh, how many ounces did I do? I did three ounces of the paint and an ounce of the half of the uh, hardener and um, like 0.8 of the uh, thinner. And I just ran out as I finished, so that was perfect, but I really cut it close. Anyway, on to the next step. So the next step really consisted of sanding, and I mean a lot of sanding. I sanded the entire boat by hand with 320. Um, and after that, I went and applied another coat of Interlux Perfection, but the results weren't quite what I was expecting, and um, I'll talk about that in a minute, and you'll see what I did to correct that and what caused the problem. Well, I haven't been happy with the way this has been turning out. The uh, Getting a lot of little heavily bumps, if you will. I don't think it's the fault of the paint. I don't think it's even the fault of the technique. Um, I think it's the weather conditions. This stuff is... Um, 
basically setting up before it has a chance to settle down if that makes any sense so I'm actually going to go ahead and sand this down smooth I got enough paint left for one coat I'm going to change my technique a little bit I'm going to use some somewhat less thinner um, probably around 10 percent and uh, use the um, the hot dog style uh, foam brushes uh, these are actually arrow worthy um, want to make sure they're uh, solvent proof the arrow worthy ones are and um, We'll see how it goes. Well, for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and sand it smooth and uh, hope for the best in the next coat. I am sanding the uh, ridges. By hand, I don't want to take too much off, and that includes the uh, the keel itself. And the whole idea behind doing it this way is that you're not taking off too much of the uh, of the paint. So we're on to coat number three. Um, not too happy with the first two coats you've seen it's been uh, pebbly and I think it's been because of the uh, atmospheric conditions it's curing too quick and it doesn't have enough time to really settle down but um so I've got a window of opportunity today and more or less starting at 12 where the humidity is under 80 percent um, temperatures like mid 70s rising I'm actually gonna start around 10 humidity is around 90 percent temperatures low and what I'm hoping that does is gives me the opportunity to, um, or gives the paint the opportunity to settle down before it starts curing, which will probably start around 12 or after 12. So while mixing up this uh, batch for the third coat, I ran into something interesting. Um, I actually had six ounces of um, paint left, uh, but only two ounces of hardener. So somewhere along the line, um, I lost an ounce of hardener, which probably explains what happened so I only have six ounces of uh, the uh, perfection left so what I'm going to do is uh, put a coat on the sides and the um, transom and uh, order another quart because definitely going to need more more of this stuff a little disappointed but uh, my own fault um, as it turns out I did not have enough of the uh, hardener and um, that might explain why it was pebbly on the first ones I may have measured incorrectly I thought I did it right but don't know so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this rolled on so this technique is called speed rolling no but seriously I am putting this third coat on the uh, I don't have enough of the entire boat here and so we're getting the sides the transom and the bow done uh, after I finish with this I'm gonna sand the entire boat with 320 by hand and uh, go for the fourth coat of uh, the Interlux uh, perfect perfection which is uh, basically I have to order another quart and as we know that was a hundred dollar mistake here's what that third coat looked like of course I didn't have enough for the entire hull but um, as you can see the uh, difference is, is astounding I think this third coat went on really well so I'll be sanding it with 320 waiting for the quarter perfection I ordered and going for quote number four I've got six ounces of the paint three ounces of the uh, hardener I used this this time to measure it um, since the syringe won't fit in there um, I use these for Sarah Sarah coating um, forgot I had them but it's perfect for this and um, right now the paint's setting up or it's going through its induction period I'm going to add 10% uh, thinner and I'm gonna roll this out hopefully this will be the last coat let's see what happens All right, I'm doing this without a mask right now so I can explain exactly what I'm doing. Problem with painting outdoors, little specs and everything. Um, I've loaded the roller. I'm going about two whiffs out and I'm gonna start spreading it in, spreading it out. 
and the whole idea is to get an even coat across everything, of course, because we're floor painting. And um, doing this whole section, you want to hit cutoff line. So in this case, the uh, the keel is a cutoff from the other section. If you can see where I'm rolling to down here, I'm cutting off at this line here. So the key now is no pressure on the roller and what I'm doing is I'm going over where the lines may be between rollers these hot dog rollers make it easy because they don't have a sharp edge and um, that should settle down and have no lines um, in between so let me get on uh, with painting the rest of it I'm gonna put a mask on now because this stuff is toxic one last thing before I put my mask on just like with varnish get a lot of good light, get a lot of good reflection, look at it, you'll see the dry spots if there are any and um, you want to make sure there aren't any because um, they will probably not settle down as well as the west, as well as the rest of the uh, paint job will. So here's what the final coat looks like. Uh, this is about two hours after finishing the paint. Uh, the paint's settling down really, really nice. It's uh, flattened out, and believe it or not, uh, it kept settling down and getting even flatter and shinier uh, until the next day. So I'm really happy with the results. Uh, this is the fourth coat of Interlux Perfection, and I'm not going to go for a fifth. I'm going to go ahead and stick with this. Interlux is correct, however. You can roll Perfection on the lighter colors and get uh, up close to a spray-like finish. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been useful to you. If it has, hit like, share it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the uh, bell so you get notifications of when I put new videos up. Again, thanks for watching.